These are instructions on how to do the transition files. First, I'm going to need a new standard IAM. So I'm going to open a standard IAM. I'm going to be making an assembly. I'm going to place, all of these files are in that folder that are on your desktop. I place component. These are all the files that are there. I'm going to do the, the main one first. Uh, that is the, I need this plate three, which looks like that. Right click dunks. I only need one of them. And then I'm going to place the vert follower. And I need two of those. I'm going to place this cam two. And finally, I'm going to place the cam one. You'll notice these have work planes going in them. We're going to need that for the drive constraint. All right, so first I want to put these rods in there. Now to do that, I've got a round at one end, and I want to make sure that goes in the bottom. So I'm going to click on these rods, click on rotate, and just rotate it a little bit so that I know that when I place them in the holes, they will have the rounded part going down. I click on constraint. We're going to use a make constraint. Now, the main the important thing about this make constraint, you have to see these dash lines in both places, a dash line on this one. And you can either go to the inside to get the dash line, or you can come to the outside. It doesn't matter. You need to have that dash line like that. Click apply. That brings one in. Click apply. It brings the other one in. And what that does is it locks them into these holes. And so now they go up and down without any problem, but they don't go anywhere else. So now I, I want to put my two cams on here. And so I constrain. I'm going to use the insert constraint. I'm going to use this one here on the right, the aligned one. That way, this outside edge will line up with this outside edge. Click apply. Do the same thing for the other one. Outside, outside. Click apply. OK, so now they're on there. And these can turn freely, but they're not connected to anything else. Now, this is the, the, the new constraint, the, the really big new constraint, is transitional. Transitional allows the bottom of this to follow the edge of this. So I click on the rounded part, and I click on the, ed, the outside of this, and I click Apply. And that comes down and touches it. I do the same thing over here, the outside of the circle, and the rounded part, and click Apply. And you'll see that as I turn this, you'll see that the rod I move it out, you can see it even better because you'll see that, whoops, and that happens sometimes too. This one won't do that. This one may, let me come back and delete that one, move this up. I'm going to try going to the bigger end here and see if that makes a difference, and I won't do it by hand. You'll see what I mean here. So I do transitional, rounded part, oops, moved it too far, and apply. Okay, and so let me do that. <laughs> and this is the thing, when you don't have the perfectly round ones, there can be issues. And when you get into the bigger project later on, you're going to see that that happens. But let me come back and try it with this one. So it's working with that one. Let's see if we can just get this to, uh, to work with these two. So now, I come back to, in my assembly, I want an angle constraint. This is how I, I drive it. I want an angle constraint of this work plane and the side of my platform. And when I, oh, I got to click that one. When I click, you got to click this one over here on the left. When I click apply, so it rotates so that they're parallel to each other. I also need a motion constraint to make these turn together. So one's going to turn the other, just like we did with the train wheels. So I click this one, click the front of this one, click the front of this one. Now when this one turns, that one will turn also. Apply, cancel. So now it's all put together. We just need to run it. If I open up my plate, I expand my plate, you'll see there's an that angle constraint is what we're going to use to drive it. I right click, drive constraint, I'm going to make this a big number to make it turn for a while. 3,600 degrees, and I click play. And you can see, and that, that's happening because of this one here. 
and it may be that you may have to use two round ones. You'll notice if you look at the PowerPoint, they use two round ones. Uh, I'm going to try it one more time. Delete this transitional. And if that doesn't work, then oh, and I can't do that because it's going to, it wants to turn. Wait, give me one second. All right. So I switched back to two regular round ones. These will always work. With the other one, with the eccentric one there, that egg-shaped one, not as often. So if, you, if it doesn't work with one, this is the way the original instructions and the PowerPoint that's in that folder explains to you how to do it. You can try the other one. So it worked for me the first time I did it. Then when I went to record it, it didn't work. So this is what should be happening. When you get to this point, you show it to me and I, I, put, I record a grade for you for this. I just want to see that you understand how to do these transition uh, constraints. Okay, I'm going to set up the next one and I'll show you real quick how to do that. All right, let's see if we can get the next one. I'm going to, for this one, I'm going to bring in, let's see, we'll do the, uh, the gear one. This is, this is the easiest one, I think. Okay, and this one, I get in all of these different gears. So, I'm bringing in one of each. All right, let me go look at the instructions on where these all go. Just a second. Okay, so basically you're putting them onto these things here. Again, we're going to use the insert, this one here. So I'm going to put the blue one up here and the red one here and the green one here and the yellow one here. Okay. All we're using here, we're not using a transition, all we're using is the motion constraint. But this is how you get gears, simulated gears turning. So we're going to use the motion constraint. And in this case, they're going to be going in opposite directions. Because as this one goes one way, I want this one to go the other way. So, in the to go from yellow to green, I do 4 slash 3. And I click this one. Then this one and apply. Then I go, I think this works, three slash two, and I click the green one, then the red one, and apply. And then I do, I'm doing two to one, so it's just two. This one, and I'm either doing this right or it's going to go the exact opposite of what I want it to do. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay, so now I uh, again I need to do a angle constraint between here and the side of it in order to lock that in, 
And then I should be able to, coming off of my plate, do my angle constraint, drive constraint. Let's see if I did this right. Yes, I did. What you'll notice is the different speeds. For every time this yellow one goes around one time, this is actually, uh, this is four, this is like uh, four to three. So when this goes around four times, this goes around three. This goes around twice for every one of these. And this is got the blue one's turning four times every time the yellow turns once. So by getting, these are, this is a diameter ratio. The blue, the yellow one is four times the diameter of the blue. So this, if these are actual wheels, actual gears, it would be working like this. So again, you show this to me and I check it out. Really easy to do. Make sure they're going in opposite directions. You'll see that as this one turns one, this turns the opposite and so on. It should be doing that. Okay, and then uh, we cancel that one. And let's see, we got one more. See if we can get this all in here. I'm gonna place, um, let's see if this one works or not. We never know. That would be that one right there. No, no, where is it? Okay, give me a second. Oh. It's this one, plate two. So I bring in plate two, and then I place this follower, one of those, and I place the weird shaped one here, this cam. Does this have a thing on the back? Yes, it does. Okay. So I'm going to constrain. Again, insert, I'm going to do, we're going to do this, flush with that, and apply. And we're going to do this, flush with that, ooh, finally got my sound, and apply. And then this one has a rotation and it has the transition. So I'm going to have a transition of this outside edge. I want to make sure I get the right one here. I want to get this little curved part there so that it touches and apply. Not sure why the other ones weren't making that sound. All right, I come back here, angle constraint, click the left one here, click my work plane, click one side, that locks it in and apply. And now I should be able to expand this and drive constraint and 3600 to get it turning a bunch. And you can see how that follows. So that's the third one. So that one has a transition one. And when this is working and following like that, that one worked pretty well. Then just let me see it. So those are the three that you need to do. Do the, the, the one that ended up being giving me all the heartache. This one, do this one first. This is the one I want, it's the most important one. And you can use these two round ones if you want to know that you're not having any glitches or try the other one. Show me as you finish them. There's also a PowerPoint that uh, this motion constraint steps, all the parts are in a folder, has this PowerPoint. And the PowerPoint has all the steps. This is what I used to do before I had a video. So it would just be, it, as, I, as you go down, you can see, rotate it. This is everything I did, but it's got pictures instead of video. So you can see that one did, it worked. I'm not sure if I go back to here. It, so that's what you do. And I believe that will do it.